Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is probably Quentin Tarantino's second last movie, and we are so excited for it. Tarantino said some time ago that he was going to call it quits after making 10 films. You said you're going to make, you're only going to make 10 movies in your career. This is number eight. Mm -hmm. Is Are you really only going to make two more movies after this one? Well, that's the idea. Is this really his penultimate film? His almost swan song? We have tried to find all the details about Tarantino's upcoming hit. Pulp Fiction 2.0? And it's the first movie where DiCaprio and Pitt appear together on screen. Quentin's ninth movie brings us back to LA in the summer of 69, and we are absolutely losing our minds about it. In times when Netflix, big budget TV shows, and blockbusters take almost all audience attention, Tarantino appears with a brand new movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is not just about free love, hippies, Leo and Brad in the same movie, and the Manson murders around the corner. First of all, this movie is about cinematography, which Tarantino loves so much. And Once Upon a Time is supposed to be a love letter to an almost forgotten old Hollywood. Tarantino confessed, I've been working on this script for five years, as well as living in Los Angeles County most of my life, including in 1969 when I was seven years old. I'm very excited to tell the story of an LA and a Hollywood that doesn't exist anymore. Well, you'll be surprised to find out that Tarantino asked for 100 million for the movie. But despite that, Sony picked up the project and approved the budget. How could you say no to such a cutie? Here's how Tarantino described the film to The Hollywood Reporter last February. It's a story that takes place in Los Angeles in 1969 at the height of hippie Hollywood. The two lead characters are Rick Dalton, former star of a Western TV series, and his longtime stunt double Cliff Booth. Both are struggling to make it in Hollywood they don't recognize anymore. But Rick has a very famous next-door neighbor, Sharon Tate. Sharon Tate, an actress who was married to the notorious director Roman Polanski, was murdered, along with three of her friends, by the Manson family. But Quentin Tarantino has maintained that the film is about 1969, not the infamous Manson slayings. DiCaprio, having impressed Tarantino during their time working together on Django Unchained, portrays Rick. Fellow Tarantino alumni Brad Pitt takes on the role of his stuntman Cliff, and newcomer Marco Robbie plays Sharon Tate. Leo and Margot have worked together before, of course, in Martin Scorsese's The Wolf of Wall Street, and it was breathtaking. The main question is, what should we expect this time from this alliance? Structurally, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is said to be separated into thematic chapters along the lines of Pulp Fiction. Tarantino has said that his new movie is probably the closest film to Pulp Fiction that he has done, suggesting that it will have a tapestry-like quality and possibly a non-linear narrative. After this statement, who would be surprised if Cliff and Rick's characters interacted directly with the Manson murders? What we know about the cast! The Rick and Cliff relationship is reportedly inspired by the real-life actor and stuntman duo Burt Reynolds and Hal Needham. Moreover, Burt Reynolds, who died in September of 2018, was supposed to play the role of George Spahn, the California rancher who was persuaded to allow the Manson family to live on his property. Finally, the role of George Spahn was given to Bruce Dern, who was extremely excited about the upcoming movie. All I can say is, this is me telling you, Quentin Tarantino was a magician, because in this movie, he did something mad. Now, in my opinion, Bruce Dern is an acting national treasure. There is another sad fact about this movie. Once Upon a Time marks the final on-screen role for Luke Perry, the Beverly Hills 90210 and Riverdale star who died suddenly on March 4th at the age of 52. Perry plays Scott Lancer, one of the main characters on the Western TV series Lancer, which ran on CBS from 1968 to 1970. What to expect from the plot? So, what can we expect? Let us remember how Tarantino directs movies. The director has been known to play hard and loose with history. Remember how Inglorious Bastards imagined an alternate reality in which American Jewish soldiers took their revenge on Hitler and murdered him at the height of World War II? Is it possible that Once Upon a Time will add something of his own on the most infamous shocking crime of the 1960s? This crime, just for a second, that signaled a dark, bloody end to hippie culture? Deborah Tate, Sharon's sister, who's been very protective of her sister's legacy, was reportedly already protesting the film, even before she knew what it was about, told TMZ. This movie is not what people would expect it to be when you combine the Tarantino and Manson names. So get ready for the unexpected. However, a dose of realism comes from Margot Robbie's uncanny portrayal of Sharon Tate, Damon Harriman as Charles Manson, and Dakota Fanning and Lena Dunham playing his followers. We can't even imagine what we'll get in the movie. 
In the trailer, a faux featurette familiarizes us with the characters, but what's going on is anyone's guess. The hilariously photoshopped posters aren't doing us any favors, either. George Spahn owned the ranch that the Manson family made their home, a property he also leased out to film crews looking for a slice of the great outdoors, to provide a background in western films. This site could very well be the intersection point between these two parallel stories of cult worship and movie stardom in a socially turbulent LA. Scandals there are already a couple of scandals surrounding the new Tarantino movie. The first is the fact that Tarantino has chosen to make a comedy film that features the very real and tragic homicide of Sharon Tate, who was nine months pregnant at the time. Some viewers are worried that the film will glorify Charles Manson, something that the media has an inexplicable habit of doing anyway. Deborah Tate's reaction only confirms our worst fear. The second scandal won't shock you at all. Quentin Tarantino found a role for Emil Hirsch, who did jail time in 2017 for assaulting studio executive Danielle Bernfeld. Jamila Jamil, a friend of Danielle, took to Twitter after Emil Hirsch's casting was announced and called a spade a spade, dubbing the appointment an intense case of rich white male privilege. When can we finally watch the movie? We'll get to find out about the early reviews after the movie's premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. Viewers will be able to watch the film a little later. The film was originally due to be released on August 9th to coincide with the 50th anniversary of the murder of actress Sharon Tate. But after conversations with Tate's sister, Tarantino decided to move the date to 26 July 2019. Thanks for watching! Check out these other great stories from Asa!